thanks for joining me in part five. Um, so just to recap in part one, we mixed the ingredients to make the dough. Part two, we kneaded the dough to make it nice and strong, uh, ready for proving. Part three, we did a little test, the window pane test, just to check we'd done a good job of our kneading. Um, and then in part four, then we left the dough to prove. And then in part four, we came back, we balled the dough up, put it in our box and we left it to, um, to prove again. So the pizza's nearly ready to go now. So, um, but part five, we're going to prepare the ingredients, prepare the toppings, I should say. So for Neapolitan pizza, the classic pizza is the margarita. So that's what we're going to be making today. And um, so that's basically tomato, mozzarella, parmesan, if you want, and some basil, um, and olive oil. That's it really. But one of the most important things, the key to it is the mozzarella, lovely creamy cheese. The problem is it has a high moisture content and then on top of that, when we buy it fresh like this, well, it's, it's stored in the brine to help it stay uh, to, fre to help it stay fresh. Um, there's a lot of excess moisture in there, so it's really important we remove as much as that as possible. Otherwise, we're going to end up with a soggy pizza. So I'm just going to open the bag, and you can see all this water running out. The brine, which helps preserve the mozzarella. And you can see just how wet that is. So the first thing I like to do is just squeeze this and get out as much of the uh, moisture as we can. And you can see already we've got a lot in that bowl. And then we've got some kitchen roll here. I'm just gonna dry this as much as I can like this, which gets as much moisture from the outside as possible. But you'll still find that there's a lot inside the mozzarella which it's absorbed in the packet. So now at this stage you can either tear it, tear the mozzarella up or slice it. Um, I like to slice it and just find it, it leaves the mozzarella in, in slightly bigger chunks which means that when it's on the pizza it doesn't overcook and it just goes nice and um, nice and creamy without overcooking. Also it looks nice. So um, we'll just cut the slice this into fairly chunky slices. I mean, to be honest, you can't really slice mozzarella thin anyway. And then I like to just go through it again. So we'll get it into kind of strips like that. So you don't want these uh, chunks to be too big. So go for nice thin slices, which is also going to help us. It's going to give us a bigger surface area and help us get as much moisture out as possible. So I think that looks okay. And then we're going to use some more kitchen roll now and we're going to place this on and then you, I mean you can do this just before you make pizza or ideally you can do it a couple hours before and then you can stick it in the fridge and that's going to soak up plenty of mozzarella plenty of water I should say from the mozzarella and then we'll take it out when we're ready to go so I'm just going to pop that in the fridge um, and then we're good to go. So we've prepared our mozzarella. Next thing is the tomatoes. So we get some good quality tinned tomatoes and then we're going to blend them up. So you can just use a blender like this. So if you've got a stick blender, they're handy. You can empty it in the bowl and use that. And um, we're looking for a consistency here that's quite thin, but still with some little chunks in there. Um, we don't want it completely thin. And if we leave it so it's still slightly chunky, we can then sieve it down. Uh, in case our sauce is a little bit too thin. So I just like to pulse it so I don't um, do it too much. And then I can tell that's about right. So I'm just going to pour it into the bowl. So you can see as it's coming out, it's still slightly chunky, um, but it's still going to be easy to spread. That those chunks are not going to cause any sort of problem. I'll just show you the sort of consistency here. So there's still some chunks in there, but nothing that's going to, uh, still going to spread nice and easily on the pizza. You could go thinner than that if you wanted. It's a little bit per personal preference, but by leaving it a little bit chunky, what it means is we can sieve it out, sieve out some of the water if we need to thicken it up. Now in this case, I'm quite happy with uh, the thickness of this, but I'll just show you in case we did want to sieve some out. Uh, you can just get a sieve and then you'll see that all the water falls through and then you can keep sieving this till you get this to the consistency you want. You can see some of the water that's uh, come out there. 
and then we're left with this tomato. All we need to do really now is just season it. Salt and pepper, that's all. Don't need any olive oil. I want quite a bit of salt in there. Bit of pepper. Now I know some people like to add oil or um, garlic, but there's no need really. If we add oil, we'll add it on the pizza when we cook. Um, and if we add garlic, I would do the same. The problem with adding garlic is um, the longer you leave the sauce, the more garlicky flavour it will take on. I mean, some people like that, but some don't. So if we're adding the garlic after, we can just control the uh, flavour of the garlic a little better. And also ensure the garlic cooks a little bit better, because sometimes you can end up with raw chunks of garlic, and then you get a really strong flavour. So something like that, check for uh, seasoning. I think we're good to go. And that's your sauce, simple as that. Really nothing fancy, no need to cook it. The sauce is gonna cook on the pizza. And we don't want the sauce too thick, as I say, because uh, otherwise when it cooks, we're gonna end up with a really thick sauce on the pizza that's basically gonna have no moisture in it left whatsoever. We don't want the pizza to be too dry. Uh, so we'd still want a little bit of moisture left in our sauce. Not spot on, so you can make that just before you make pizza and leave it out. Or you can make it a couple hours before and stick it in the fridge. And that's it really, we've got our basil, which we don't really need to do anything to, some fresh basil. And then we've got our parmesan, which again, we don't need to do anything to that, we can just grate this straight on our pizza. And that's it, ready to uh, make some pizza.